Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today is a ominous day where uh, UST, one of the top crypto stable coins, depegged, which means that uh, the value of it broke from uh, the fixed amount, which was uh, supposed to be one US dollar. Now this has happened in fiat currencies as well. Famously, we've had that with respect to oil, or with respect to gold. Uh, in various times, you'll have uh, fears of say the Hong Kong dollar depegging, uh, et cetera, right? And I thought this was a great time to talk about a subject that I hinted on back a while ago when I was talking about inflation in a video, and that is the difference between devaluation and inflation. These are two things that people don't really, they combine them together, and I think it's worth understanding that they're separate, although they have a similar effect, uh, there, there is a notable difference, and the mechanics of it have an important distinction, okay? So we're gonna dive into that right now, and talk about it. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. If you'd like help with international tax planning, paying as close to zero tax legally as possible, getting residencies or getting second citizenships, buying citizenship by investment, etc., please reach out to us. You can book a call at calendly.com forward slash michael dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below or send a message to our websites offshorecitizen.net. Okay. Well, uh, so devaluation versus inflation. What is the difference? Okay, so what is inflation? We typically think of inflation as price increases, right? Now, price increases will obviously be relative to dollars or will relative to whatever the currency that we're talking about is. Uh, devaluation is when the price, uh, the value of the dollar goes down, okay? So notice that it's the same effect. It has this differential, which is I think why people confuse it, but the mechanism is different and the explanation is different. Now, how we can tell the difference between these two is typically in terms of the relationship between the value in other currencies, okay? So if what you find is that prices are staying stable uh, when measured in foreign currencies, but dropping, or, or sorry, but rising in terms of the local currency, it's probably a sign of devaluation of the currency rather than inflation, okay? So broad-based inflation should be price increases. And to tell whether prices are increasing because prices are increasing, uh, that is to say things are becoming more expensive, or that the currency is devaluing, the way to tell is to say, hang on, what about in terms of others? And you might say, well, hang on a minute, shouldn't this be the same? No, it's not. Uh, let's use a simple example, okay? Say you are in a place where there's suddenly a scarcity of food, Okay, if you're in a place where there's a scarcity of food, it doesn't that the price of that food will go up in terms of all currencies. Okay, regardless, it doesn't have anything to do with printing money. It doesn't have to do with it's just there's a scarcity of food. The supply and demand means that prices are going up. Okay, this is actually a lot of what we've been seeing over the last year and a half or so. So some people are kind of confusing devaluation. You'll notice that the U.S. dollar is extremely strong right now uh, with uh, inflation. Right, so we're seeing prices inflate largely because of uh, unusual demand patterns, pent up demand, as well as supply chain bottlenecks, et cetera. Now it's true that the rate of uh, price increase is somewhat limited by uh, the availability of currency. So there is an enabling factor uh, related to currency supply, but that's not quite the same, okay? By contrast, you could go and look at someplace like Turkey where you'll notice that the prices, say, of real estate measured in U.S. dollars have remained the same, but in Turkish lira, they have gone up. And now, there's actually inflation on top of that in Turkey, so there's, there's both factors uh, at play to some extent, but uh, there's a devaluation of the currency. And this pegging thing is a really good example of it, okay? If I'm holding some currency and it uh, loses the peg, this is a devaluation. Now, where do devaluations come from? I just mentioned where inflation comes from, right? Inflation is when you have uh, a limitation of supply relative to demand, right? So either demand spikes and the supply can't increase to match it, or the supply is constrained for some reason, maybe it collapses, such as if you have food shortages, et cetera, you may see prices inflate. That's one thing. Uh, and often could be specific commodity based or specific, you know, it could be isolated. It isn't necessarily broad based. Whereas devaluation is always intrinsically broad based, okay? 
So when we're talking about the, uh, the devaluation, you just have to understand where the value of currency comes from, right? What is currency? Currency is an IOU, right? And if currency is an IOU, then the two things that it is based on, the value of it, are based on the value of the things that uh, it are owed and the creditworthiness, meaning the ability of the person to actually uh, fulfill on that IOU. Usually, uh, if the currency is devaluing, it's because the creditworthiness is decreasing, meaning the ability of the creditor to honor that IOU, or, or sorry, the debtor to honor that IOU is decreasing, okay? Uh, this is gonna happen in a variety of different cases, but it's easiest to understand if we think about a pegged currency. Right? The idea of a pegged currency is it's interchangeable, right? For example, uh, if I bring you this, you're gonna give me a dollar, okay? Now, the moment that I have too low a supply of dollars relative to the amount of redemptions, we're gonna get a, a DPEG. We're gonna get a situation where the uh, thing that you're bringing in, this IOU, is devaluing because it's not able to match. And so it's gonna get repriced according to what makes sense. This is essentially what happened in the early 70s when they took the US dollar off the gold standard, right? They basically didn't have sufficient gold to be able to make that work. And as a result, they decided to break the peg with, uh, with gold and let the currency freely float. And you know, there you go. So yeah, I think it's important to understand the difference. They both have similar consequences. They can both happen simultaneously, right? But uh, they're fundamentally different. Now, Please note that the uh, devaluation can happen from both sides, right? It can happen because, the, in other words, the creditworthiness can be broken because, hey, listen, I just increased my debt obligations, right? That's one way that the uh, uh, peg can be broken, right? That the, the creditworthiness can decrease. Uh, and the other is that essentially my assets or income, my ability to fulfill on those drops. And some of the times those things can happen simultaneously. So we kind of want to think of it in those, those broad terms. And obviously there's some supply and demand that might affect uh, the actual fluctuations in the cost of that money. But this is where devaluation exists somewhat differently from inflation and they often get confused. So let me know what you guys think. Put it in the comments below if you liked the video. Share it with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you on the next video.